But um, tell us, when, when you were shortlisted and you started uh, working at GBC from the start, what kinds of lessons were you taking through before you went on radio for the first time? Okay. I had to go to the radio training school and do, you know, an announcer's course, learning how to talk on the radio, getting your pronunciation correct, and um, a whole lot of things. And then after that, we had to go to the studio proper. And there we have to we had to understudy the announcers. Mm. Those who were announcing. You sit in a chair at the back and then uh, you watch the announcer behind the microphone, how they change their papers. You make sure the paper does not make any rustling noise mm -hmm. because the microphone is very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So the least noise that we make, it fixes it. And that's not what the listener wants. So we were taken through all those. And uh, when the authorities thought, hey, whatever they had was okay for them, I was uh, put behind the microphone mm. to start announcing. I see. And, uh, it was very rigorous, right? It wasn't easy. I, mean, I could imagine but, that you need to go through. But why did you need to go through all that strict um, routine before finally coming out as an announcer? Because they wanted nothing but the best. You had to be good. You had to know how to do the work. Right? Yeah. You just don't go in there and start announcing because uh, maybe you've got a voice. Yeah, good voice. No, mm. that's not it. You've got to learn. Like I said, they t took you to pronunciation and one you how to dot your eyes and cross your T's mm -hmm. and get everything. Where right to take your pauses and breaths. You got it. And everything. You got it. Did, yes. did you enjoy? Were you at the time from that time? becoming nervous or frightened about the, the prospect Do of it. Do you really want to know? <laughs> I want to the know. The first time that I sat behind the microphone, it was something else. I started talking and my legs and my hands were shaking. Oh dear. <laughs> Nobody will believe that a whole bitch is oh, angel it happens goes to through all those emotions. It happens to everybody. It happens to everybody. At times you shake and you can even tell from your voice, your voice. that you are you know, not yourself. But with time, I overcame it. But what kept you going, you know, to the I point I loved what I was doing. Mm. I loved what I was doing. And I was prepared to learn. So from 65, at the external service, I think um, up to the somewhere in the 70s, the externals, we, we had the external and national service. Mm -hmm. Both services merged. merged. So we moved to the national um, studios mm. and we were all, you know, doing one thing. But I was still announcing I was even um, shortlisted for reading the news. The news. So all this while you were it, doing announcements. Announcing. Announcing wow. and, you know, presenting music. So how many years did you programs. do the announcement and music programs before graduating to news <laughs> itself? <laughs> like that. And I, I did it for more than five years. Wow. Yes, for more than five years. I see. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, you just did not get up and read the news. Read no. the news. When you had the likes of uh, the Kwame Amamus and mm. the John Hammonds and the Genevieve Nylanders and the uh, Vada Corantina Santis, who are you, Beatrice, able to read the news? <laughs> no. You had to learn wow. how to do it. Yes. Wow. So when it got to that time, too, I had to undergo another course mm. and when we came up came out you know passed out if I should um, put it that way I started um, reading the news it wasn't without its challenges there were times you go on air you come back and uh, your boss would be at the entrance you mispronounced this word you did this you did that Ooh. It was, it, 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 it was no fun. But that make, made you better. That oh, made sure, you appreciate sure. that you have mm -hmm. to go on air Constru and not make any mistakes. Constructive criticisms. Yeah. yeah, that's it. They, 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 and they, they, they won't just tell you you did it wrong, but they will show you how to, how do, to it do it right. right. And uh, we had to learn. So I kept on and on and on and on. We started uh, at that time, you, you, with the news, you just did not get up 
to read the major news. You started with the news on the air, mm -hmm. the three-minute bulletin. Mm -hmm. and then you graduate from there to the two o'clock, which was, I think, five minutes. And then when you are obo, that's when you go mm -hmm. with the one o'clock and the six o'clock. Yeah, those, those were our bulletins. The big ones, the big ones, the big ones. The big ones. And unfortunately, I was able to go through all these and then um, in 1985, I, well, one of the days I was called to our director's office, the director of radio, and they said, well, you have been awarded a scholarship and uh, you will have to go to the BBC for further studies. Wow. <laughs> and uh, I went with another guy from uh, the Volta region, Rafa Devo. Mm. Uh, the two of us went to the BBC. And uh, I think we were 10 course mates. Our head of the course was, the, uh, was um, Bobby J, a white man. And then an Italian, uh, Alex Vincenti, mm. he was taking us through the whatever. And then the director was John Turtle. And uh, it was a beautiful free month, you know, uh, course. It took, the, it took us through so many things. I had a little, you know, insight into how to, oh, I forgot. I said, <laughs> before I had the scholarship, scholarship to go to the BBC, I had then been, you know, drafted to the television um, yeah. uh, uh, network. Yeah. I was doing television news in addition to radio. So when I went on the course, our, our director general came on a duty visit. Visit. So he came to the Langham place. That's where we had the mm -hmm. uh, radio production at okay. the school. He came there and uh, told the bosses that uh, I read television news. I presented television news in addition to the radio news. So they had to give me an insight into mm -hmm. you know, how television uh, news is um, done. So I worked from the Langham place. I was shuttling between there and the... You know London, so maybe Bush House. Portland. Yeah, no, do. not Bush House. No, no this Bush was a um, okay. uh, white city. Okay. Well, that, well, that was where the television station was. So I went there and then um, I was taking through, you know, how to do the preparation for the news and um, a whole lot of things. And then uh, from there we went to. Um, Belfast, Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. At their radio station. We also had, you know, some further training there. And then after that, we came back home to Ghana to continue with my work. So all this time, I was doing radio, but after the six o'clock, I will have to run to the television studios to rehearse my bulletin. I see. So that I could do So how many stuff. minutes um, every day when you had to go and read your, um, present your TV news, did you spend time with your script to yes. master it? How yes. long do you do that? How mm -hmm. many minutes do you spend with the At script? At least I before? had to spend about 30 minutes. I see. There were times before I went for the 6 o'clock bulletin, I'd you know, sneak to the television studio uh, newsroom mm -hmm. to have a look at um, you know, the script. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were times that the stories that we read on radio, you know, some of them were, were carried. Mm -hmm. to the TV. So it was a bit, you know, easier uh, for me. So I did that. And uh, after some time, that was a long time, from 1985 to 1996, I think. That was when Professor McDodo. He was then, then um, director of television, mm. also discovered me. And he said they wanted to start a breakfast um, you know, program. program on television, and he wanted me to host it. So, whoa, mm. there's something else in addition to all that I was doing. So the long and short of it, as a result of that, I had to resign from uh, radio and then concentrate Full -time on television. On television yeah. I see. So what I need to... You, 
from the beginning when we started, you told us about family and your five children, your grandchildren. Great. But how did you juggle that with the family? This busy shadow you've just told me. Mm -hmm. How did you manage all of that with your children? Your mother was helping. But my, that my would not be enough, really. My mother was there all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, she comes for about uh, uh, some weeks and then has to go back because... Uh, my, the, the family was back there in second mm. day and she also had to take to the home. My husband was there okay. and uh, I always had a house help. So they were helping at the times that I had to go to work. And then when I came back home, full time mommy. Tell us about your husband. <laughs> We're no longer together. You're no longer together. No, okay. How long were you married? Well, Tell for me more than him. 20 years. Okay. For more than 20 right. years. When I met him, he was in the army. Okay. He was so he's a army. military. Mm -hmm. okay. he, was a, he was a military. He's a retired man. military officer now. Yes, he was in the mm -hmm. army when I met him. Yeah. I had all of my five children. Five children with him. him. Yes. So mm. he's a um, uh, Cyprian Duke Swatson. Okay. And all my children are Swatsons. That's a very posh uh, name. English or fancy? Fancy from Anomabo. <laughs> Cyprian Duke. Duke. I think the Duke he. Cyprian Duke. Duke. That's that's yeah. that's a very nice name. So, mm -hmm. how did the, how did he then, when you were married, accommodate your your busy life? He helped a lot. He helped a lot. He understood, you know, the sort of work that I had to do. So when I had to go early morning. He would also take over and look after the children. And uh, with the help of the house help, you know, get the kids ready for school. And then when I went early morning, I closed at 2. Hmm. So by 3, I was home. You were home. And so I took over. That was how, you know. What about we when were you were pregnant? I mean, I'm asking these questions on the back of the fact that there are many young uh, professional women in the workplaces who have to juggle pregnancy and maternity leave three months, and their life is such. Uh, I, I must say that I, I admire professional women who, who do this. Uh, was it friendly at GBC? when you got pregnant you wouldn't believe it um i i had my first um, child after two years of working at the gbc and then um when i went i i didn't go the full term hmm. full term i mean i i didn't carry the pregnancy for nine months okay i had a premature uh, you know delivery, delivery at seven months okay so after six weeks i had to go back to work Ooh. Sure, because they said, hey, he didn't go the full time, so he did not deserve to have the three months of maternity leave. So, so oh, that's cruel. That's cruel, that's but mean. But then, mean, yeah, that's a word. Mm -hmm. Fortunately enough, uh, my sister who comes after me, Elizabeth, she's in Tema. Mm -hmm. At that time, she was on uh, vacation from okay. school. Mm -hmm. So she came and uh, she helped to look after Atu. Mm -hmm. Uh, you were not in the, uh, the School of Journalism. I was. So do you know Atu? Um, depends on the year um, he graduated. Oh, I mean, I graduated in, I in 98. So no, 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 if 90. it was before then. It, it um, was before. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was before then. It was before then, yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't I know. Uh, he was, um, do you know Ketado? Yes, I know Ketado. Yeah, Ketado's mate. Okay, so, so that, Ketado. that year group. Yeah, good, uh, okay. That, that year Ketado's year group was a year uh, before I don't know you should have known so him. I, I, I should have known him. But you don't know to who? Uh, that was how they... <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so mm -hmm. he, he's a journalist now? Um, not a practicing journalist okay. at the moment. But he he was away in the well. U.S. He trained as a journalist. He came back um, uh, last year. He's now settled back in Ghana. And then um, after that, I had it was the first one. Mm -hmm. I had Fifi the second one mm. and then it was pretty the same thing uh, with, with the help of you know house elves we were able to manage uh, my husband and I and the house elf then the third one then the fourth then we applied and the bridge <laughs> because the girl wasn't coming so that, that, that was it but then it wasn't easy you know um, <clears throat> Getting pregnant and I'm um, going to work, you, 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 
had to work the extra mile extra for people to, mile. that you know had something to offer yeah otherwise maybe i would have been kicked off well yeah. we're having a chat with Beatrice Seydoux, one of Ghana's most celebrated broadcasters who made a very successful transition from radio to television. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll get to learn more about her work with television and maybe she'll share a few tips with you. Stay with us. The election promises, the will and wherewithal to execute. Voters take, we bring it all to you on Manifesto Digest. Here we gauge the wish list versus the reality. How do the promises measure against the records and performance indicators? Manifesto Digest, an election headquarters program. On Joy News, only on Multi-TV. Also on radio and online. And supported by StarGuard. What is the strategic vision? I want to build GMP into an integrated, a world-class integrated oil and gas company. Joy News brings you selected episodes of Time with David. The oil and gas series was recorded in late 2009 and 2010. In it, David Ampofo sought at the time to throw light on the emerging oil and gas industry and many of the issues raised then remain relevant. The gas processing plant currently being developed with Sinopec was one of the issues that stood out. Enjoy a look back at the very beginning of Jubilee Oil and Gas in Ghana. This and every Saturday at 7 p.m. on Joy News, only on Multi TV. Imagine a contract between the Ghana government and these companies. Is it for the public to see? It's not there. No. We don't even know. Well, that's what I mean. What, what is there? Where is the transparency? I think that anybody who wants to have access to the petroleum agreement between GMPC, the government, and the partners, the documents are available. They say Ida dwelleth, another second place of the most high, shall abide another shall the the Almighty. So me have to praise God again. The Ghetto Gladiator and the world's most biggest dancer master, King Lagazi. This is the number one reggae dancer show. Dap, 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 legend. Remember, we will kill Babylon with lyrics. Not with gun and knife, but style, fashion, and pattern. We will churn down straight. What we reason with artists both near and far, yard and foreign. You see what me I say? We enter into the world of reggae and profile our artists, legends. Dap, 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 legend. On to the world. Watch Dub Legend. This and every Saturday at 5 p.m. exclusively on Senior Freak. Your election headquarters on TV, radio, and online. Election Headquarters, supported by Star Ghana. Welcome back to PM Express Personality Friday, and I'm chatting with Beatrice Aida. So, Madam, we're talking about the rigor and the demand on, on you, and I asked whether you enjoyed the 40 years that you worked, and indeed you did. And what kept you going was because you loved it. But there should be something more that kept you going apart from just loving it. Without the love, what else? You know, I had so much interest and I did it with passion. Mm. Did you get support from your, your extended family, oh, your sure. mother, your My father, your siblings? My parents were so, so, so proud of me mm. that I was there. Initially, my father they didn't want me to go into journalism. Mm. But I'm not a journalist, I'm a broadcaster. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. somehow or the other yeah. is the same, you know, job. Uh, but um, 
after some time, he resigned and he was mm. so happy. And I think he died a proud, you know, father. Yeah. And my mother too did. Yeah. Because um, each time they saw me, the things that they said to me made me so happy that mm. at least, you know, they had not told in vain. And you, you said initially your father was not very acceptable of the fact that you decided to go into this yeah, because profession. Because he didn't want uh, his daughter to be, you know, at the war front covering news. That was a perception, right? That, 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 that was what he thought. But somehow or the other it happened, you know, because in the 1966 school, I was on duty. Mm -hmm. And they had to mention our names on the air for us to go and relieve those who had gone early morning so they could go home. And incidentally, the old man heard it in second D. So he came to Accra because they had been misinformed. They mm. told them that the names that they heard on the radio were the broadcasters who were killed oh, at dear. the time of the coup. So oh, he had dear. to come and make sure. And he didn't even, you wouldn't even believe it. He didn't, instead of oh, going dear. home to check for my sister, he came straight to, to your GBC. Work place. Fortunately, I was there and I saw him. And, uh, he was happy. He prayed for me, and he went back. But during the coups, I mean, it must have been very difficult when you worked in a state broadcaster, and there is always the threat that there could be a violent takeover and your life could be at risk. Did you, did you not feel worried about your life? Why not? Working at GBC. Why not? We were How did you manage those, those fears? Just to, 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 to make sure you stayed on the, you know, right path and it, it did not get into, you know, harm's way when it happened. Because it happened three times whilst, whilst I was you were there. Whilst I was there. You've told us about the first. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the second. I mean, you really we, want to know I really want some to of know. these memories. You know, I'm writing a book. I'll write a book. So you put, all you read, you put it all in your memoirs. Mm -hmm. How did, you, how did you deal with that? It wasn't easy, but somehow or the other, we managed to. We managed to. And usually when there are takeovers of that nature, what happens? Would you just be there and then what happens sure. really? You wouldn't know. You would be at work normal, you, you resume work in the morning? The, 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 the first one, I, like I said, 1966, I was then off. Of off in the uh, early morning and I was mm. going in the afternoon mm. so I ran into it and there was so much shooting it wow. got to a point when we were entering uh, the commander around said we should go back because they couldn't guarantee our safety mm. they didn't know they were shooting from Kanda and all sorts of places and they wouldn't know where a bullet will hit mm. so we had to retreat go back you know behind the street the ring road mm -hmm. and after it had died down they smuggled us into the studio because <laughs> the, uh, you know firing or no firing so what is it? work is it, had to go is it, on is it fighting to capture the broadcast studio or what i mean why would a, a broadcast uh, institution be a target or why would How shooting would go on a in a broadcasting go on because, house um, the soldiers are taking over and then um, the loyal soldiers, meaning mm, at that time, uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah security guards and mm. whatnot, they were around. And uh, not all of them had been captured, mm. so they were resisting. And I mm. think they were those who were, you know, shooting out mm. with the uh, soldiers mm. who had um, taken mm. over. But it didn't hit us in the studio. Mm. We were well protected by mm. the soldiers. They were guarding our studios. So, hey. <laughs> it must be very, very mm -hmm. nerve-wracking. I, mm -hmm. I really am curious, mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. because if you were sitting, for example, if you were on air, and then suddenly somebody came into the studio with a gun, mm -mm. do you stop? That never or happened. It, it, it never happened? It never happened. I really need what to understand what happened. <laughs> it never happened. Like I'm saying, you know, the 66, um, I wasn't in the thick of, in the things, thick of things, but I had to you know, go in the afternoon when it had almost died down. But it was uh, the second one that, you know, I ran into it because mm. uh, we had uh, broke off in the morning and we were going to go back at 8 mm. and then bingo, it happened. Yeah, it was. 
So were you forced to announce that yeah. there was a takeover of government? It, nobody has to force you. It's your duty. And at that time, I had the uh, uh, <laughs> misfortune of being the shift supervisor. And I was the announcer. So you had so to announce it. Whether you like it or not, you got to be in the studio. Wow. And when you got to be there, you got to be there. You got to be read. Yes. <laughs> so I did it. So, tell me, so, so, I mean, read right now. Demonstrate to us. I can't do On a it. typical I don't want to remember. Time, I wouldn't have even you, talked about it read. if he hadn't asked. Because some of these things are better left, you know. Enough you don't want to remember. Mm -mm. But it will, it will make interesting um, learning write, for write, those of our write, viewers who will be watching. <laughs> so you go sit there and you just say, good morning. Uh, I want to announce to you that there's a There's cool been a changeover. There's a changeover in government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need you to demonstrate <laughs> no, it first. I, <laughs> we've done it. That, that's what you said. And I helped you out. That's it. So at that time, you know, we interrupt our normal uh, programs we have to play martial music and um, uh, what do you call it our own um, patriotic music mm -hmm. we play that all through interspersed with whatever uh, announcement that has been written out to us you read it you know from time to time so it's, it's obvious from from our interaction that you've had good memories of GBC but you've also had bad memories share with us some of those bad memories I've just told you this one just what, those what, 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 what could be you know, anything worse? worse than this were, were there anything else no I mean apart from the coups did you feel for example as a woman that you struggle to rise through the ranks to be the head of a to news be the head of the news presentation. Mm -hmm. Tell us about those. Oh, you know there there are these uh, petty bickerings and uh, you know working with human beings. Mm. Someone might just not like the the, the the cut of your nose, and that would be mm. it. But hey, <laughs> I'm not here because of. It's very audio. typical of mm -hmm. public service and state mm -hmm. ins mm -hmm. institutions. Mm -hmm. How did you manage all of those? To in I mean because when you come on TV. Mm -hmm. People see you, they see the cheerful face. Mm -hmm. They don't see all the things that you deal with before you come Life on must radio. go on. You just manage it this mm -hmm. way. Life Accept must go that on. it is and the I way And I know it is. whatever that I'm doing is better than whatever whoever is thinking. So, hey, I've got to do my job and do it to the best of my ability. So if you advise y younger uh, female professionals in the same job you were in, what would you say to them? Don't look at the side or behind you. Just focus and make sure whatever you're doing, you give of your best. And that's it. With the help of God, you will sail through. That is it, that's really. That's it. Mm -hmm. And all these, did they come from inspiration from your family? Mm -hmm. The person you are today, how much of it was determined or shaped by your mother, your siblings, and your father? I think all of them helped. All of them helped. You see, my father, uh, I've said, you know, I've told this story somewhere. Uh, when I was in primary school, when I closed from school, I think when I was in, uh, was it primary three or four? In the evening, he would give me the papers. In those days, it was a daily graphic. Then he would call me to his side, Prabha read it out to me what more could have shaped you know my, my life than that so I, I i i cultivated the interest of reading from what my my daddy you know asked me to do and that each time i went on a vacation i made sure i was there and i listened to them oh well our friend said they, they, they saw you or heard you and that you were doing well. I said, oh, da, is it? And what about you? I said, oh, Prabha, you are doing good. Just keep it up. And I was... And you see, they were religious people, staunch Catholics, died in war. So they, they never forgot their God. So you are a Catholic? I am a Catholic. And, you know, uh, even with all this, um, uh, what do you... Busy schedule. Busy schedule. I found time 
to go to church with my children. That's what, that's what I want to know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned busy schedule. You found time to go to church mm -hmm. with your children. Mm -hmm. What kind of mother were you to your children having such a busy life? I don't know, but maybe you have to ask my children, but I think I was the best, and I am still the best mother who will be there for them anytime any day when you say be there for them anytime any day through exactly, whatever problem. exactly what do you do when when the children were going to secondary school i was there to you know see to the admission see to the admission and uh when they came from school i was there to receive them when they were traveling outside i gave them my all tried whatever a mother could do to help them. Whatever problems that they had and they came to me, I helped them. My best. Like girlfriend issues? Did they discuss these things with well, you? I am like, you know, brothers and their sisters mm -hmm. with my children. They tell me, the things that they tell me, I don't think their daddy has, you know. A faint even, idea. No. They confide in me a lot. So you were their confidant. Sort of. And this is what you would recommend every professional woman Let your children to be. be your friends. But it's difficult in our modern day to juggle career with family. You Very can do demanding. It. You can do it. You know, it might not be 10 hours or uh, 8 hours a day, but if even it's 3 hours, quality time. Quality that's what time. you've got to spend with your children for them to also know that they have a mother that they can run to. They have a shoulder that they can cry on because I always had shoulders to cry on. So why not give it to my children? And um, now I think because I couldn't give them too much time, whatever that I couldn't do for them, I am now doing for my grandchildren. Mm. That's why I'm there for them. Spending all the time with yes. your grandchildren. With, uh, I have 10 grandchildren, I told you, mm. and I've been around all of them at birth, except one. All nine of them I had been there, you know, when they were born. The seven that were born in the U.S., I was always there. You went to, to the U.S. Uh -huh. to be there for mm -hmm. them. For them, yes. And do your children appreciate this? Oh. You wouldn't know, right? I know. Okay. They do. They do. They do. From the things that they tell me and what they do, even my in-laws. I don't even call them in-laws. They are my children. Mm. Because if you're married to my son, why not? Yeah. I've got to take you in as, as my daughter. daughter. So I'm there looking after my two grandchildren with my son and my daughter-in-law. And I, I don't think there's any difference. And I don't think we have any problems. I love them as much as their mothers, you know, love them. So if you are to be celebrated how would you want to be celebrated as a successful mother and grandmother or as a successful broadcaster nina nina <laughs> look at me yes. lump them together yes yes you but which of them really would you feel honored I think to be I, celebrated I, I love being a grandmother i love being a grandmother i love being i love children i love children especially when they are babies helping you know to, to, to um, take care of them. The only thing I can do for them is to give them breast milk. Breastfeed. Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> but apart from that, I do everything for them. Changing their diapers, feeding them, bathing them, you name it, everything. I love it. What is the single most happiest moment of your life? <laughs> there are so many, I, d I don't even know which of them to you know, pinpoint. But I must say, on the whole, I am a very happy woman. Do you feel guilty that you were not there full time for your kids and perhaps you're trying to make up with your grandchildren? No, I don't think so, no. 
I don't think so because um, I don't think I was that far away from them. From work, I went home. But then, like I said, the few hours that I had with them, I made sure I, you know, uh, uh, um, supplied their needs. Okay? I did it. When I was not working early morning and I was, you know, going in the afternoon, I was bathing them, I was taking them to school, I was doing everything. When they were going to secondary school, it wasn't their daddy who, you know, took them to the schools. I did. So how long ago um, have you been separated from your ex-husband? Let's not talk about that. That's my private term, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So um, what I need to end up on is that <laughs> when you look at the, the type of marriage you had, how would you say that influenced the character formation of your children and who they are today? Come again. If you look at the kind of marriage you mm -hmm. had, juggling that with your career, how would you say the marriage as a unit influenced your children's character? I think whatever, whatever times that they spent with the two of us, uh, they, 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 they realized, you know, they had the best parents. You know, we did things like, you know, good parents would do. Whatever they had to get, whatever they had to you know, you name it. So, 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 they are also, all five of them, happily married because they know what married life is. Even though their mother is no longer married to their daddy, I don't think it's the first time. So, madam, tell me, work at GBC, um, as, a, as a young broadcaster who started going through the ranks, do you think that, looking back, do you enjoy the stress and rigor you were put through? Sure, whatever successes that I must have chugged, I, I, I don't think without, you know, that kind of training, I would have been able to do it. Mm. No. Work required a lot of discipline, right? Yes. Would you say the modern generation of broadcasters have that discipline and the verve to chalk the su kinds of successes that your generation chalked? I think they're doing their best. Mm. their own way. I mm. mm -hmm. think they are doing their best even though there is more room for improvement. You see, things have changed. Things have changed. The, whatever that we went through at that time, it's not the same now. It's different. Mm -hmm. And I think in your, maybe you can also yeah. be, you know, a test case. Yeah. In your own way, I think you're doing, even though you are not ha you do not have to <laughs> go through that kind of a rigorous mm, training that yeah. we did. You also, you know, doing your best. Right? But but yeah, we are. But I mean, I I still see GBC as the pioneer. I mean, broadcasting in Ghana. Not that you see, we still are. You are yes, still we well, are. but when you look we are at number one, number one, I yeah. agree. You are very number one. But <laughs> what what I what I am thinking is that if you look at. And what has happened after GBC? GBC came on the scene, and a lot of private televisions and radios have come along. When you compare the the quality, let's say the standards of broadcasting that you experience and the standards of today, what what what, what observations do you make? I think the permissiveness is too much. You understand what I mean? Yes. Um, back at the GBC. We have, we have a, a, you know, a code of, um, is it conduct or... Or ethics? discipline or discipline. ethics, yeah. Ethics, yeah, I should, I should say. There are certain things you would not dare do. For example? These days, people are even able to get away with murder, if I should put it that, that way. The sort of... Um, discourse that goes on some of the stations there are times I listen and I say wow it's too much you know the language uh, I think we've got to do that with some form of decorum um, calling people names and uh, Maybe I, I should 
you know, end it. Should it no, be but we want to. We really want to know. I mean, I, I think that as uh, somebody with your level of achievement, your observation uh, are critical to shaping the quality of the media. From 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 what I see. You know, so if you had your will, how would you like um, the media, electronic media, radio and television, to be regulated? Would you want more regulation or less regulation? I wish, I wish you know, we had a, a censorship, you know, uh, whatever. People who would um, listen in to some of the adverts, mm. number one. Mm. Some of the adverts. So self-censorship, you that's mean? That's right. Mm. You know, so that we just do not put does anything on air because it's money. Mm. Well, maybe uh, that's my yeah. opinion. Yeah. It might not, you know, count, but I think it matters. Some of it, you 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 listen and uh, you watch, and it's mm -mm, that's too much. Especially with the, you know what I'm saying. Alcoholic talking. beverages. That's right. It's too much. What are we teaching the? You no know, children, because through no fault of theirs, most of the time they are behind the television sets and um, listening to the radio, and uh, they they are put there for them to listen and look. Mm. So are they to practice? We should look at all these. Maybe the times that we have to broadcast those adverts and uh, things like that, and some of these shows. Well, maybe, Foreign maybe. acquired productions That's and right. telenovelas. That's right. Maybe now I'm growing old, so <laughs> I, I, you know I frown on uh, you know some of these things. But I think it's too much. But uh, what about quality of language and diction on TV and radio? With GBC, I don't think we're doing badly mm. because we still have our training school. Mm. I don't know about yours. I'm sure you also have. We have training, of, mm -hmm. training system. And I don't know training. about the others. Yeah. But um, there are times you're listening and uh, the sort of pronunciations that you hear. Uh, and the, 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 some of the voices are not even cut for reading whatever, but they do. Mm. In our time... You would not even get that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. There was no way you could have done that, but they allow them to. Mm. But GBC doesn't do that. They, you know, put you through that kind of a, uh, what do you call it, uh, test, and if you do not pass, you do not pass. You don't. So, what kind of voice will qualify to go on radio or on TV? It should be radiogenic. TV? How would you describe a radiogenic you voice? You don't lisp. You don't lisp. You know what I mean? Fe, 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 fe. Mm. That will put the listeners off. That's uh, you know some of the wow. requirements and the voice quality must be appealing to the ear. I won't say there are certain voices that are bad, but they are just not cut for certain programs. There are some voices you know they'll be better for maybe. Uh, presentation of drama or stuff like that but for news a bit too different i see mm -hmm. i mean these are these are these are insightful so for example if i have an ambition to be a broadcaster and starting from gbc and i went to journalism school or acquired a degree I don't necessarily qualify. I need, my voice needs to be tested. That's number one. Before I, 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 I get one. the license to come in. That's number one. You must have, but you then, must, okay, yeah. sorry to cut you. If you are not cut for reading the news... It doesn't you could, mean... It doesn't that's, mean that's you, 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 it's, it's, a, it's yeah. a useless case. You could do news reporting, you know. Mm -hmm. You go on assignment, you come and maybe you read your own um, story. Mm -hmm. These days, everybody wants to be heard. So you can read your own story, but you just don't go and read. Mm. You've got to read it out to somebody who knows for guidance, mm. so you get it right. I see. So you get it right, yeah. I see. And these uh, discipline, uh, disciplinary steps, 
are critical, you would say. Mm -hmm. They're very important. Mm -hmm. And it is what GBC uh, That is what made, made me. So what I would, you know, recommend, recommend for, all of for that. For anybody. I see. So walk us through your work at GBC. I mean, there, you might have done a lot of things. You told us how you got in. But tell us what your impact to broadcasting has been in terms of what you did on Maybe a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe you have to tell me. I wouldn't know. You were listening and watching, so... <laughs> yeah. On a day-to-day -day basis, um, what did you do? What did I do? Apart from, you've told us already, you wake up 2 a.m., you join the shift, you, mm -hmm. you, you come to work. That was in the early days. Yeah, what but exactly you know, did you do we, when you... We, 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 from we 1985, from, when you settled uh, into TV? Settled... Uh, oh, okay, when I joined the TV, when I was uh, discovered by uh, the late... Uh, Madam Genevieve Nylander, may she rest in peace, where I was taken through a voice Train, te a screening. test, <laughs> test. On the, you know, and then um, how um, suitable I would look on the screen. I see. But you know what I told her from the beginning? I told her I was um, allergic to makeup, especially the powder, whatever. Mm because I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be a subject in everybody's home. Yes, because yeah. she comes on TV and, uh, oh, look at her. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want that, so I didn't want to do it. So you didn't use makeup on TV? I did, I did. I did. Eventually I had to, because if you don't, you know, you'll have the shiny face, yeah, the forehead, forehead and the yeah. nose and whatnot, and uh, that's not what the camera wants. Yeah. You know, you have to do a little bit of it. So... What was I talking about? So, I mean, from, from you wanted to know when you got into TV, mm -hmm. your routine, what your routine was. On yeah, she really helped me a lot. Uh, she took me through some of the, you know, uh, drills, how one had to read on television, and then um, how to comport yourself. And uh, the first day, the first day that I was going to go on uh, the screen, she went with me from the office to the television studios, helped me to rehearse my bulletin. Mm. And when I was done and it was time for me to go and make up, she disappeared. I couldn't find her anywhere. Mm. So I had to go to the makeup room by myself and then um, make up and then... Uh, Go. The first time that I went on television, it was just 10 minutes. We had, we did it, I think it was 10 minutes to 6. You just don't jump into uh, the major bullets, you know. Mm. You start with the small ones and then you, 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 you graduated, if I should put it that way. 6 was the major bullet. It wasn't. Okay. It was the 7 o'clock okay. one, but that, that, okay. that, that was the teaser. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. You start with that. So when I finished reading, she suddenly reappeared. <laughs> and then not knowing, she was just, you know, by the corner, watching on the uh, television screen to check on how I would do. And uh, bingo, she said, you did it. So now you are going to read the television news. So that was I see. what? So uh, I took it seriously because I, I, I felt it was a challenge, and I love challenges. Mm. 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 You, you've got to try your hands at uh, things that you, you love and work at it so that, you know, mm. you, 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 you get it right. So gradually, from the 10 to, to 6, mm -hmm. I started doing the 7 o'clock uh, news. And the rest is history. The rest, indeed, is history. Yeah, because after, after reading, I've forgotten what time, GBC held the first awards um, ceremony. Unfortunately, I got the best, uh, you know, uh, uh, TV personality award. I and see. I was like, wow. Wow. I couldn't believe it. You did incredibly. I mean, as we were growing, myself, I mean, I, I looked 
at people like yourselves and the way you carried yourself on set and the way you you read your scripts it was I must say it was brilliant so what kept you going all these years you see I loved to read I still read but it's not at the same level that you know mm. I was um, reading in those days when I closed from work and I got home and the children were sleeping in order not to disturb you know what I did with the light on the patio oh no, mm. porch, porch, porch. Mm -hmm. I would just you know part the curtain a little bit for a little light to shine so you, you know, can read so I can read so what types of books do you read I was reading anything novels novels uh, whatever motivational what, books whatever that I laid my hands mm -hmm. on but I love novels you know more because it was interesting when you read um, what do you, you read with what understanding do you seek, what do you seek to get from your reading as a broadcaster I, I guess that you possibly want to familiarize yourself with new words mm -hmm. and, you know mm -hmm. is that what you did when it, you were reading? it was part of it mm. to and also to broaden my scope you know to know about what goes on the maybe the, the world. fiction world mm. or the real world or whatever mm. so I, I love to read mm. just like I, I love to watch you know tell it now but I think too much of it too is not too good. Well, I mean, now you, you are home mainly. How do you keep fit? How do I keep fit? Yeah. I go for walks in the morning. And then after that, I have my cup of tea. Okay. That's very English. Tea. Oh, well, <laughs> I, 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 I am addicted to tea. <laughs> if I wake up in the morning and I don't drink my tea, it's like I've missed something. And for more than... I've forgotten, I've lost count of the years. Mm. For whatever time, you know, that's what I've been doing. I drink my tea, my grandchildren come to my room, I help in uh, preparing them for school. The two of them are in, you know, uh, nursery. Nursery. So I have to help prepare them. And then uh, I take it easy when I do not have to go out. I just, you know. I've worked so hard. You have, yeah. So I think I How many years have you worked in broadcasting in total? I worked for 40 years. 40 years? Mm, not 14, no. 40, zero. 40 zero, yeah. This was your life? Yes. Is it a I life? I spent all my life. That, that, that's the only thing I knew. Is it a life you enjoyed? I did, or else I couldn't have stayed on. Hey. All right, it's been great having a chat with you, uh, Beatrice Seydoux, and this is where we draw the curtains. Uh, Beatrice Seydoux was with us on PM Express, and thanks for watching. Join us again on Monday for another interesting edition of PM Express. Have a great weekend, and good night.